Hey everybody, Eric Hayden here in the garden today. Finally, a nice dry day. In fact, the last couple days have been dry here in eastern North Carolina. If you've been following our videos, we talked about how much rain we had this past week over a five day period, uh, going back to last Sunday through this past Friday, um, from Sunday morning on, uh, at eight o'clock to Sunday to uh, Friday morning at eight o'clock, we had just over 10 inches of rainfall. So about three months worth of rain. Our average is about three inches a month. Um, in just five days. So tremendous amount of rain in the garden. Um, so today's video is gonna talk about some things that you can do after the rain has fallen. Uh, we're gonna talk about looking at your roses when you're out doing any pruning or watering and things that you might wanna look for, uh, especially in wet weather. And then one thing that kind of surprised me, spider mites. Usually they are more prevalent in hot and dry weather, but I'm starting to see some spider mites already in my garden. Shouldn't be too shocked because almost exactly a year ago, I did a video on spider mites talking about spraying. And if you click below on more videos, you'll see some of the things I use in the toolkit to spray for mites. So we're going to show you the garden. I stopped deadheading just to show you um, a, a quick another example on deadheading. But for the most part, I've deadheaded most of the roses. Uh, we are past peak. Um, we mentioned in a prior video, if you want more on where and why you should deadhead, click below on one of my more recent ones. But you can see these roses are well past peak. Even some fresher ones are quite small. So I'll take all those off. And in my prior video, again, I mentioned I'm not too fancy that the bottom line is you want to get rid of that growth. Um, if you at least just cut it under the, the dead rose itself, that's fine. If you want to go down to a set of uh, three or five leaves, that's fine as well. You don't have to get too fancy. I will say sometimes in the garden, if I have um, some type of spray, so here's an example where I have multiple blooms, I don't want to clip right there and leave these three small canes. So in that case, I will go down a little bit uh, where the cane gets a little bit closer to the size of a pencil. But your biggest thing is just remove your spent blooms. If you don't, um, you know, it doesn't look good. It can harbor disease and insects and it slows the growth for the next cycle. Eventually though, mother nature will take those petals off. So if you don't do it, they're going to fall off regardless. One thing I've noticed though, uh, anytime I'm out here, even if it's just a five, a couple five, five, ten minutes, I'm looking at the roses and I notice I've got some yellowing of the leaves. I mean, you see luscious green foliage and then you see this. Um, so I was kind of curious what was going on and usually I'll, I'll pluck a leaf off like this and kind of examine it. Um, in this case, uh, it's not black spot. Um, I flip this one over and I don't see any evidence of spider mites. So I was kind of curious on that and I pulled off three different leaves over here to show you what I'm talking about because I actually have three different things going on. One of them is not that much. The other two um, are more significant, especially the one on the right. So we've got three different sets of leaves. I know these are two sets there, but there's one issue there, one issue there, and one issue there. Um, if I had to place my bets on 10 inches of rain, and the reason why I had yellowing leaves, um, it would be on black spot. I was really worried about black spot and I just don't have a lot in my garden, but that's what it looks like. Um, it's a black spot, hence its name. Uh, I spray weekly for it, so I, I don't have a lot of it, but it can cause some yellowing of the leaf. And if the spots spread or if you have a more severe outbreak, um, your leaves can yellow and fall off. So yes, I do have some black spot in the garden, but not a lot. We're talking probably less than 5% of the leaves, if even that. So the next culprit, I look at these two sets of leaves. I said, what is going on? The first one that stood out to me, and I did a video on this before, was spider mites. Anytime you have a yellowing of the leaf like this, if you turn the leaf over, you're going to see the telltale sign of spider mites. Kind of a sandpaper look. Um, notice it just looks very dull green on the bottom. Um, and I don't think it's going to show up on the camera. Um, but sometimes I picked this leaf on purpose. There's a little bit of webbing in here. You can actually see the suckers crawling around and you can see a little bit of webbing. Uh, so that is spider mite damage. So that's one of the biggest causes of the yellowing leaves in my garden. They prefer hot, dry weather uh, here in eastern North Carolina. Anytime toward Memorial Day, I've had them in my garden, so I shouldn't be shocked. But we had so much rain, usually that's not the first thing you can think of. I have a more detailed video below. One of your first steps that you can do is actually with a water wand or spray of water, you can water 
up under the leaves and knock them loose. I've found that to be pretty effective. It won't get rid of all of them. Uh, that's a good first step. Um, a second step is a miticide. And again, I have more information below in a video from about a year ago. And you'll want to rotate those. So this morning I sprayed with Avid and Tetrasan. So these should be a distant memory because uh, I caught it pretty good. But so that's spider mites. So we have a, a little bit of black spot, definitely have spider mites in the garden. And the last one is this. Um, this is some type of deficiency because of the rain. And again, if you turn the leaf over, you can learn a lot. So here's our comparison, spider mite on the right, deficiency on the left. I'm gonna examine this leaf. Notice how it's spotted and the veins are mainly the parts that are yellow. And contrast the underside of that leaf with the underside of the one on the right. The one on the right is the spider mites and you can see the difference, it looks like sandpaper. The one on the left is clean. Uh, I don't see any hint of spider mites. So if you have some yellowing leaves and you Google it, you're going to hear everything from black spot on the left to some type of deficiency, nitrogen or iron, or spider mites. Examine your leaves uh, top and bottom to determine what's going on and then you can attack them. I always spray for black spot so I don't have to worry about that. I was already doing it. Introduced a miticide. Um, in the spray this morning, so I don't have to worry about spider mites anymore. And when I say don't worry, I'm still going to be watching, but I'm doing what I need to do. And the last one's a little bit more tricky. Um, this could be nitrogen or iron. Um, with the 10 inches of rain, perhaps um, we have some uh, nutrients that washed away. Um, perhaps I need some more uh, oxygen to the soil. Um, the reason why I say perhaps, I have raised beds, so it's not like I have a drainage issue. But just to be safe, I may do a pitchfork and try to open the soil a little bit. Um, and then I might do a little bit of miracle Grow, something quick acting. Um, but if you saw my last video, I just put down some organics. They are slow release, but in that slow release uh, generic Osmocote I have, there was a little bit of urea in it. So nitrogen, and I think it had a little iron in it too. Um, the soil should be replenished uh, with what I just did the other day. So we'll certainly keep a, a watch on that. Speaking of the organics, uh, I mentioned I use alfalfa pellets. Some folks don't like those because it's not pulverized like the meal is. Uh, but notice um, with our, I didn't do this at the beginning of the rains, but I did it toward the end of the week and we had another inch or two of rain. And you can see that really pulverized the um, alfalfa pellets. And you can still see some of my fertilizer um, that is yet to work into the soil. So I'll probably scratch this in a little bit while I try to aerate uh, if my issue is oxygen. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. I'm gonna come around here just to show you what it looks like from the top side. Um, again, if you have yellowing leaves, kind of pay attention to what your weather's been like. If it's been hot and dry, it could be spider mites. Here's the deficiency um, on, um, what is this? This is Mr. Lincoln. I saw a little bit of it on um, Alina. And then some roses, I don't know why, but tend to have more issues more often. This is um, European Touch, and I always, even in New York, seem to have spider mite issues. Um, this one has a ton of spider mites on it. Um, just this yellowing the leaves, and I don't, I, you can see the webbing, good. See the webbing right there? I may have to hit this one again, and I'm zooming in. Those are the actual spider mites crawling around, so you can see them on this video. Um, so what I sprayed, Tetrasan um, works for 21 days, and it's all life cycles, um, and it's mobile through the tissue, leaf tissue. So it will impact the eggs and the younger aphids, or the younger spider mites. Um, to get the older ones, uh, Avid is more of a contact killer, but look at those things. Um, so I'm just, I'm just impressed that the camera picks this up. Not, not good for my garden, because I got a lot of them. But you can see the spider mites crawling around in the classic web shape right there um, that really right there shows that this is spider mite issue for most of the garden uh, so hopefully this video helps you um, it shows that rose growing can be tough in the sense that you know you've got yellow leaves and it doesn't always mean the same thing um, and here's one that's more like a nitrogen def deficiency or some type of deficiency and again you look on the underside and i don't see too much hint of spider mites, maybe a couple, but certainly not like European touch. So that's it from the garden. I'm gonna finish up the um, deadheading here. Um, I can see I've got to do Let Freedom Ring and Zach Nobles. Um, but next time you see a video, all these blooms will be removed 
and the garden will look more like this. I've already done a firm, Jewel Grace, Crystalline, and Marlin Stay. Um, and then I'll just kind of monitor, probably spray once a week for the uh, mites until I have them under control, um, and then get a little fertilizer down and try to aerate the soil in case um, my soil's waterlogged and needs some oxygen. Again, I don't think that's a major issue because I don't know if you can tell the depth in this video, but these are raised beds and the soil has been heavily amended, but we started with 100% sand. So I don't have something like uh, clay. I don't have any clay, so um, I don't think they're waterlogged, but I'll certainly take a look at that. There's sunny Sundays. Of course, it's got some water damage, but still a uh, very beautiful colored rose. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. And it looks like for the eastern part of the country, finally summer. I know we had all that rain, and now it seems like the oven has been turned on. We had temperatures well into the 80s today, and that looks to continue here for the near future. Thanks again for subscribing. Share this with other Rosarians. What issues in the garden are you having? I know depending on where you live, you're having different issues based on the weather and climate. Thanks again, and we'll be in touch again with another video later this week.